All right, so today we'll be looking at how to deploy an Actis web uh, app in Render. So first of all, what we are going to do here is to first create uh, a PostgreSQL database. So I'm going to click here, go ahead, and then database name, I'm going to give it the name tests. Yes. So, and then that's the name of the instance, sorry, instance of the database. And then database name, I'm going to give it test underscore db. And then user, yeah, I'm going to give it test underscore db. Region, here I'm going to select Frankfurt. You can select whichever you want, but make sure you select the region that is closest to you. SQL version, I'll select the latest one. This one is not compulsory. I'm going to select the free tier, and I'm going to go ahead and create the database. Now, the database is creating, so we have to wait for it. So once it's done creating, the password, internal database URL, external database URL, and this one will be made available. So now let's go back and see. So now they say we should fork this. Uh, of course, as it stands now, uh, probably since we'll be uploading our own project, we don't need to do this. So now we we'll move. You make sure your project, number one, your environment, uh, number one, your main file. Now, if you look at your main file, the way uh, it, it is, you find out that make sure you bind it to this address, this IP 0.0.0.0, .0 else you'll be having issues when deploying to render. And also the, make sure your port, take note of the port you use here. It mustn't be 88, it can be anything, but whatever port you are using, make sure you take note of it. So now let's go back to the instructions and see. So they say create a new web service on render and give render permissions to access. Okay, so we we'll come to dashboard. And then, of course, you we'll come to new, and then we'll come to web service. So under web service, of course, you can connect your GitHub. Mine is already connected, as you can see here. Since it's already signing, I'll just come to this place, public Git repository, and then I'll go straight to the project. Now, this is the, my project repository, the one I'm trying to upload. And make sure you choose the branch you are uploading. So I want to upload the main branch, so I'm going to choose the main branch. If you're uploading any other branch, you make sure you select a particular branch. So I'm going to copy what I have here and then head back to this and then I'll paste it here. So once I'm done, make sure you connect your GitHub or GitLab or Git Pocket account and then I'll go to connect. Now you can see it was able to pick the project and then here I'll just rename it to user management. And then of course language, you make sure you choose Rust. And then the branch, of course, is my main branch. If there were other branches, I only have the main branch. If there were other branches, you would have indicated here, which of course you would have just gone ahead and selected. So here you can still change it if you want. So in a situation, my root directory, right, is directly in my repository, which is this. So I didn't mean, let's say my app is not in the root directory. Let's say it's in this, a sub directory of the root directory. Then that will be what I'm going to put here. You understand? Let's say may, maybe we have a folder that have both uh, client and server, where the client is the front end and the server is the back end. And then inside the server, that is where I have all my Rust code. So I'll just come ahead and put server here. But in my own case, everything is just in the main directory. So there's no need for that. Now, you can see this one, this build now, all right, this command is not enough for what we want to do. So if we come back to the instruction, you see it says, Okay, we have done this, selected Rust, and it says run the build command should be this. So, and then, since it's this command, it means we are running a script, and then this should be the content of the script. So, in your project, in the main directory of your project, make sure you have this script, build.sh, and inside the script, make sure you copy the exact same thing here. Make sure that is what is here. All right. So why I excluded this command was because I'm actually doing this from my own end manually. As when I tried doing it, uh, it was throwing errors. All right. So your git ignore, always remember to ignore your target, to ignore your .env, and also your migrations. Why I ignored migrations? Why I included migrations? Because uh, when I left it, like I was having some issues, yes, building or deploying on, on render. So take note of that. Then... So, so we have this already. So it's a simply executing command, blah, blah, blah. Then start command should be this, cargo run, 
uh, release. So if you come here, you can see the start command already. Cargo run release. So here it's supposed to be uh, dot slash my build dot sh. So now I'm going to choose the free because that's what I need. Now environment variable. The first environment variable you need to declare is your database. As you can see it here, database. And then look at it. What they say the internal database URL for the database you created above. So now this is the database we created. Where is it? Yes, this is the database we created. And you can see, look at internal database URL and external database URL. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this one, the internal database URL. So I will come to this place. And then, of course, database URL. And then I'm going to paste it. Now, do you remember what I told you here? That I said you should take note of the port you used here, right? So let's go to... Now you can see that the port we used here is 8080. So you come back to this. And then you add an environment variable of port and then use the same port you use in your main app. If the port you use is like maybe 5000, make sure what you put here too is 5000. And make sure the environment variable name is port. So once we are done, you can just go ahead here. Here you don't need to do anything here. You need to go ahead and deploy web service. So let's see. So now, of course, before we even de deploy, uh, sorry, I before you even deploy, right? Of course, this deployment is going to fail. It's going to, it's definitely going to fail. Now, what we need to do, because based on this our application, we have not actually set up the database, so we need to set up the database. So that's where our diesel comes in. So to set up database, of course, you can see the first command we need to run is our diesel setup. So I'm going to come in and run the command diesel set up and then so now before you run this uh diesel setup all right one thing you need to take note of is you need to enter the url of your database here and now since we are communicating from our local environment or local machine it means that we need to come and copy the url of our database the external URL this time around because we want to we are connecting and we want to connect to the database from our external from an external source so we we'll come here and then I'm going to put this so once I put this I'm going to run the command this will set up so you see it has run the setup so once it's run the setup successfully you will see a migration folder with this diesel initial setup so the next thing we need to run of course we need to define our table and then the table we want to create is the is the users table so we are going to run this command diesel migration generate uh, user table so you can name it any name of your choice but me I, I will name it a uh, user table and then once you are okay with it I'll go ahead and then enter so it's going to create another folder inside of this called user table with a down SQL and up SQL so uh, up SQL is the SQL command you want it to run whenever you are running the migration so here I have a table sql table to create a user table so i have it here so and the command says this is the command here to create a user table now whatever thing you are doing here in your op make sure the reverse anything you are going to do down here is what is going to reverse what you have done in the op yes so you can read more on that that's you can read up on this and then you understand more of this so once you are done putting the up and the down so the next thing the next command you need to run here is this your diesel migration run so this is the next command we need to run so we we'll go ahead and then run diesel migration run so once you run it and it's successful it should generate a schema file and what will be will be in the schema file will be exactly what is in your op.sql but this time around actually it's going to be in form of schema in form of rust so you can see everything here so once you have done everything all these things which uh we have done all right so you can actually check whether this migration you have run whether it has created help you created the database in your external or not and how do you know so let's try and connect to the database the external database and see I'll copy it they'll come and run psql and then 
the URL. So you can see, so this shows that my database have been created, all right? So I'll just go ahead and exit it. So that's just what I wanted to confirm. So once you have done all of this, right? The next thing is you push your application, all right? So you, you push your application. So so already uh, 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 here, okay, here it is. So now you come to this place, all right? And then once you come here, you just go to deploy. So just like I said, you make sure you push, after making all these changes and all of that, you make sure you push the whole changes to your repository. And once you are done pushing, you come here, of course, mine has already started deploying because of uh, I've already pushed to GitHub repository. Everything is complete already. So once you you do that, of course, it, it must have shown you that it has failed, deployment failed due to the fact that maybe you have not made some of these changes earlier on. So what you just need to do is to come here and then go ahead and deploy latest commit. Or you can simply clear build, catch, and deploy or deploy latest commit. So me, you can see there's no, there's no outstanding commits. I've already committed everything that I'm supposed to, yeah, and all of that. So, so for here now, so let's wait uh, and see. So you monitor it here. So, so you can see now the deployment is successful. You're having your services live. So I'm going to come here now. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm come here. I'm going to paste and enter. Now, of course, the URL, of course, is an API. So API slash user. Okay, sorry, no users. Users. So you can see, of course, it's not working because the database is actually empty. So of course my get is working and i believe even post and the rest is going to work so that is how you can deploy uh, a rust app 